and it will never be. Father, Lord, we are grateful. We can't take it for granted. Lord, as we remember today, the way they sang, Hosanna, Hosanna, to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So we are here, Father, to welcome you more and more, oh, Father, that we may experience you more and more. And Lord, we thank you that in this place we are in your presence because you have said that where two or three have met in your name, your presence is there. And Lord, it is our prayer that we shall experience your presence. Your presence is going to be a manifest in this place. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Father. The God in the highest be lifted up, O oh God. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Let a king be lifted up. Oh, Hosanna. Somebody let the name of Jesus in the highest. Let a king be lifted up. Sing Hosanna.
King of kings and Lord of lords, be lifted up this morning as we open our hearts to receive you. We continue thanking you for your love, for your care, for your sacrifice, that as you entered in Jerusalem this morning, may you enter into our hearts, that, Lord, we shall continuously worship you and worship you in truth and in spirit. Father, we invite the Holy Spirit this morning to come and guide us in everything that we shall be doing. Above all, give us the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding of your word, that as we listen to your word this morning, that we shall not go back the same. We shall go chained. We shall remove every bit of the stones that is in our hearts and lay it down, Lord, so that you can take it to Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. We know you are here. Continue with us in this service. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming, and the choir will continue and leading us in the procession of him. why we have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace that through his son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. May we together join in the prayer of inspiration. Inspire us, O oh Lord, as we come to worship draw us to yourself in prayers and praises, and help us to understand your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We shall give a moment of silence to do our individual reflection of the week, of our walk with Christ, of our service into the vineyard of the Lord.
Lord, hear our prayers. May our cries come unto you. Let us together join in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, we confess that we have seen in our thoughts, in our words, in what we have done, and in what we have failed to do. We are like lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive those who confess their faults, as you promised in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily food. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Let us praise God for his mercy. O oh Lord, open our lips. And so we shall stand and give praises to the Lord, joining the choir in songs of praises and worship. Praise God. Praise Jesus. I know it's a cold morning, but it's also a beautiful morning to give a joyful sound to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's wave our palm leaves and shout hallelujah.
we are going to sing a joyful praise to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands.
God and raise our hosannas in the highest place. He is a God that never fails us. He is a God that thinks of us each minute. Every time he's wondering, what is she going to eat? Where is she going to go? We thank him for protection till today. We thank him for provision. And that is why we are here to sing Hosanna. To sing Hosanna in the highest. He is a God of his word. He's not a man that he can lie. And he has truly fulfilled his promises. I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord.
Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, 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 in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, King of Kings, for this new day that you've given us. We thank you that, King of Kings, we are alive to see and celebrate a triumph entry this year. And, King of Kings, our prayer that even as you enter Jerusalem, King of Kings, you clean the city. The Lord, you shall clean our hearts, you shall clean our lives, you shall purify each one of us. Father, we commit to you this nation, Uganda. We thank you for the rulers you've given us. We pray for this president, for the ministers, for the judiciary, for the members of parliament, all those that you've given power and authority. Father, we pray that all that they do will bring glory unto your holy name. King of kings, we want to come to you and praying for our families. We thank King of kings that you gave us people that we live with in our families. Father, we pray for mutual love and hope. We pray for guidance. Father, we pray for encouragement. We pray, King of Kings, that our homes shall be places of love, shall be places of unity, shall be places of peace, King of Kings. One thank you for our children you have given us. We commit them into your hands. Those in the schools, Lord, protect them where they are. Those who come from our homes to go to the schools, Lord, protect them, King of Kings. We thank King of Kings for every person in other different homes. Lord, we pray that it shall be people that live for unity and for peace. We thank King of Kings that you give us life and you are the healer of all our diseases. Lord, we pray and that King of Kings, as we did many years ago, going around and doing good and healing the sick and all kind of diseases among your people, the Lord, you will continue to do the same among us. There are those who are sick in our midst, there are those who are sick in different hospitals and dispensaries. Remember our students who may be sick in our ungulping. We pray for them, King of Kings, that your healing hand may be stretched upon each one of them. We thank for our doctors, for the nurses, for the midwives, and we pray for delegates and wisdom even as they do their work, King of Kings. We thank for Uganda Christian University, for the top management, for all the leaders in this university. We thank for our students, King of Kings, and as we come closer to the end of this semester, Lord, we pray for wisdom, guidance, and understanding that comes from you. We pray for those who have not yet cleared, Lord, that you shall provide for you are a provider. King of kings, remember that those who always get sicknesses, who got troubles during the time of exams, we come against all those king illnesses in the name of Jesus. Protect your children, King of kings. We thank for the gift of the, the rains that have come. Lord, we pray that they shall fat, now shall the soils that people planting, they will get harvest that is in plenty. We give you glory and honor, Lord, King of kings. By now, it is there are those who are distressed. Father, we pray that you look out to your children who look on to you for mercy and whose sicknesses and illnesses are beyond human hope. All hope is gone from their lives. Lord, we commit them into your hands that you shall visit them. Those who are in depression, those who are, have out of stress, Lord, we visit each one of them, King of Kings. We also remember those who have recently lost their beloved ones. We pray for comfort. We pray for strength. We pray, King of Kings, that you shall visit their homes. We encourage them. Give them hope, King of Kings. We give you glory and honor, Lord, King of Kings. We thank for the servant that you've brought for the message this day. 
We commit him into your hands. The Lord shall speak through him to all of us. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We join the words of the grace together. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. And the psalm of the day this morning is Psalm 100. We shall stand and recite it together. Together. Must the full joys to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. He is uh, who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us take our seats, and we invite children to come forward. Please, children, come. Come forward. our hands of blessings and we bless these children. Father, we thank you for the little children that you have given us, you have given to the church, you have given to families as a gift. Lord, they have come to worship you because you said in your word that we should not stop little ones from coming to you. Lord, they come this morning with open hearts as they leave to go to their church. Lord, we pray for your guidance, we pray for your presence. We pray that you work with the teachers, give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Above all, give them love to take care of these children. We thank you, Lord, for the teachers and the work that they do. We take, thank you for the parents. Lord, amid is them, there might be those who are not well. We pray for your hands of healing. We pray that you visit them, O oh God. Even as they go to pray, play, and make friends with others, I pray that, Lord, you will keep watch over them. We thank you for their schools, for their teachers. Bless their teachers, bless their education. Give them wisdom. We thank you, Lord. And bless your holy name in Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And may the blessing of God that surpasses all human understanding be in their hearts and in their mind, in the knowledge of you and your son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you 
move with you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. You can go to the church, the follow the teacher. Cry. Hosanna, and the old men cry. Hosanna, and the ladies cry. Hosanna, O King of Israel. The children cry. taken from Luke chapter 19 reading begin from verse 28 Luke chapter 19 reading begin from verse 28 and when he had said these things he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mouth that is called Olive, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a coal tight, on which no one ever yet sat. And tie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the coal, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the coal? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their clothes on the coal, they set Jesus on it. And as if he rode along, they spread their clothes on the road, as if he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they have seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is the word of God. We shall rise up and sing a hymn that the choir will lead as we prepare our hearts to affirm the faith in Christ.
we shall together join in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We shall join in the prayer responses. Show us your constant love, O oh God, and grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, save our president and teach his counselors wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O oh Lord, make your ways known upon the earth and let your silence access. Give your people the blessing of peace. Create pure hearts in us, O oh Lord. Today is Palm Sunday, and the prayer of the day is Hosanna to the highest, son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards mankind sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May we together join in the morning prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of the new day. Defend us, we pray, against all harm. Direct our thoughts, speech, and actions. Help us to serve you faithfully, that in our work and worship, we may always please you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. May we take our seats and wait for announcement. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Please do turn around and wave to five people. Make them feel welcome. That we may have joy together in our Father's presence. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us this morning. It's tricky weather for some people who may have chosen to stay home. But that you have come here. We really appreciate. Join me as we appreciate Master Seed for leading us in worship. Thank you so much, Master Seed Choir, for your commitment to the ministry and every sacrifice you make to lead us in worship. Do we have any first time worshipers with us? If you're here for the first time worshiping with us, we want to recognize you and receive you. Please put up your hand wherever you are and we will receive you. Uh -huh. We have some <laughs> visitors. Brother, you are very, very welcome. Thank you for choosing to worship with us. When you return to wherever you normally worship, please take our greetings. Amen. We also want to celebrate with those who for whom this week has been special this past week. You celebrated a birthday, an anniversary. We want to sing a blessing over you. Please stand if you're there, and the church will sing a blessing over you. We have some people standing here. Mm -hmm. 
Congregation, stretch your right hand of blessing towards them as we sing God's blessing over them. May the good Lord bless you. To Jesus be true. May God's Holy Spirit be remain over you. We celebrate you, our friends, and we pray that your years ahead will be better than the years before as God continues to bless you. This is a very, very special week beginning today. It's called the Holy Week or Passion Week. It begins with Palm Sunday and ends on Easter Day. So we're going to have services every day beginning tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. At 5.30 p.m. we'll be here for services. We want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus as he goes to the cross and ultimately as he rises from the dead. So Monday to Thursday, we will be meeting here 5.30 p.m. On Thursday, we will celebrate Holy Communion together, but also after the service, we will eat together. Tell your neighbor we're going to eat together. Tell your neighbor we are going to eat together. And you will bring the food. <laughs> that is the main message there. We're going to bring what to eat together, put it together, and share together. After the service, we encourage you to prepare something. Now ask your neighbor, what will you bring? Eh, Duncan's neighbor is not asking. So we invite you to bring something so that we can share together on Thursday. Good Friday service will be at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. The service will be here. At 9 a.m., it's a powerful service with lots of reading of scripture. You don't want to miss the Good Friday service. And then Sunday, we'll be together here for the two services, 7.30 and 9.30. I wish you a very powerful holy week, a week of reflection and drawing close to God. This afternoon, we have been announcing a talk hosted by Mama Pesh, and it's happening at 3 p.m. right here. 3 p.m., our speaker is Dr. Sabrina Chitaka, and we'll be addressing ourselves to the theme of depression. I encourage you to bring a friend as you come for the talk at 3 p.m., we also remind you of the weekend to remember. And I'll ask Comfort and Duncan to stand up. I don't think you have stood up before. Please do stand up. <clears throat> we want to encourage you to make payments for the weekend to remember. And if you want a couple to encourage you how you can deposit little by little until the 31st of May when we go, for the weekend, remember for couples, please approach Comfort and Duncan. They'll be very happy to work with you this journey. The cost is one million if you pay by Sunday this month. If you pay by next Sunday, you'll pay only one million. And if you can't pay by Sunday, it will cost you 1.2 million. It's four nights of fellowship, uh, for four full days of fellowship, eating together, but also wonderful teaching. Please plan to be part of the weekend to remember. I bring you words of appreciation from uh, Reverend Canon Professor Eric Ansime, who lost his mother some time back, probably two weeks uh, ago, and this community supported him in many ways. 
So he sends his appreciation. He asks me to thank you. So thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for all support. We are making another appeal for donations. Our church relations department will be doing a mission to North Karamoja. And the diocese has appealed for support by way of clothing and by way of food. We invite you to give us clothing so that we can share with our brothers and sisters in North Karamoja Diocese. A special appeal to you, many of you who can afford to buy a clergy shirt. A clergy shirt. Reverend Henry, does it cost 60000 No, 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 no. Or else we shall put it at 60,000. <laughs> How beautiful it would be if Tony Croft Chapel could raise 10 shirts, 20 shirts, and the pastors in Northern Karamoja would be blessed, even as church relations go. If the Lord touches your heart, but also provides uh, during the course of the week, please bring a donation of whatever kind you can afford, and it will be a blessing to North Karamoja. Diocese. And then uh, this is how we gave uh, during the course of the week, beginning with Sunday, the 17th of March. Offertory was 1,474,800 shillings. Tithe was 10,000 shillings. Sunday school giving was 146,400 shillings. Giving at Kampala campus was 36,500 shillings. Tithe brought through the office was 20,000 shillings. And tithe deposited to the bank account was 490,400 shillings. Uh, we have good news with uh, our Momo account. Things are beginning to happen. Yesterday, they brought the SIM card but the offices were closed, so we couldn't activate it. <laughs> so tomorrow, we'll be able to activate the SIM card and we'll communicate so that you can give your offering and whatever you want to give to the Lord through Momo. Our preacher today is a dear friend of mine. We have been in the Lord's vineyard together for many, many years, probably 15 plus years, maybe 20 he is uh, the international director for CMS Africa. CMS Africa. Uh, he is the husband of one wife and a father of many, many children. Please join me as we make feel welcome, Reverend Canon Dr. Moses Bushendik. Brother Moses, you're welcome, and we pray that God will use you to bring his word to us. Before he comes, I'll invite you to stand. We are going to sing and worship God with our offertory. Please do stand. Praise God, church. This is a wonderful day. It's a day of giving praise and thanks to the Lord, for his name is above every other name, so we sing Hosanna, hallelujah. God exalted Jesus to the highest place. He has given him a name. That is above all the other name. How the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that he is Lord. Have exalted. Jesus to the highest place. He has given him the name that is above all other Above all other names, the name of 
to dance together halalango jesu okay and from front to the to the other end everybody must be what halalango jesu the Lord. Let's pray together as we stand. Our blessed Lord, we just remind ourselves this morning that you owe us nothing, but we owe you everything. We thank you for giving us an opportunity to come to worship you this Palm Sunday. And Lord, it's our prayer that we join you this morning as you enter Jerusalem. Lord, we pray that you enter our hearts in a triumphant way and you turn around our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Allow me to sincerely appreciate our dear brother and chaplain, the Reverend Canon Engineer Paul Waswa, who has given me the opportunity to study God's word, reflect on it, and speak to you. Let's join, join me to just appreciate him with a round of applause. Thank you, Paul, and you are chaplaincy team. Um, Caroline has been introduced, but I should actually mention she's my only um, roommate, <laughs> whom I'm very blessed and thankful to God to have. Just stand up and wave. <laughs> Caroline Bushendic, yes. With her, we have five children, four daughters and one son. 
the first two daughters are, have started working, thanks to UCU, who has formed them, and they are now out there serving. The other three are still in school, and they are in boarding school, so they are not here with us today. Um, let me go to the message for the day. When I was asked to speak today, I was given two things. I was given the theme, a topic, which is worship the king. And I was given a text, which is Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 38. I had to take some time to just study uh, this text so that I can be relevant to the theme. And I think the Lord has enabled me to do exactly that. Two things we are going to establish, that Jesus is king and that we worship him. Just two things. And if you could rephrase the, the topic, it's worship King Jesus. Thank you, Reverend Walter, for reading the text very beautifully. I don't want to repeat the entire text, but I'll go through a few things. Friends, today, as we all know, is Palm Sunday. And this is the day we commemorate Jesus' triumphant entry to Jerusalem. This day starts Jesus' final journey on earth. So it begins, this final journey begins today with an entry, a triumphal entry to Jerusalem. He goes through some betrayals on the way, and then he has his last supper with his disciples, and then he is arrested, tortured, and crucified on Friday, and then it ends with a victorious resurrection on Sunday. This is an important week, Holy Week or Passion Week, depending on, you know, what you choose to use. And I would like to invite you to join with me in this journey that Jesus is making. And particularly for you to join me this Palm Sunday. I would like you to be part of this journey and part of this trip. Verses 35, 29b to 35a reads, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there. Some people would use donkey or a young do donkey, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, tell him the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he told them. As they were untying the cold, its owners asked them, why are you untying the cold? They, re they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus. Fast forward. Let me just talk about first century, the time when Jesus lived and ministered. There were three or four particular means of transport. One of them was walking, and Jesus did a lot of walking. The other one were use of donkeys. 
And donkeys were the cars, the premiers of the time. There were no premiers then. Donkeys were. Then you had horses. Horses were used by kind of kings and, and army generals as they go to war. They were much more faster than the premiers of the time. Those were the horses. And then now, yeah, those were the V8s of the, of the time. And then there were camels. Camels were the trucks of the time. The ones that we know now that bring our goods and merchandise from Mombasa to Kampala <laughs> and probably go to Eastern Congo, maybe all the way to Kinshasa. The camels were the transporters of goods. Now fast forward, today we have the Premios, the Toyotas, the Mercedes Benzes, the BMWs, the Subarus, and name them, the Jeeps and so forth. Those are now the means of transport that kind of made Jesus' donkey and horses a little lower. Now, are we together? Now, if the Palm Sunday happened today, I would like you now to imagine you are one of the two disciples who Jesus called to him and said, come. I would like you to go to Toyota, Uganda, which is just opposite Coca-Cola. When you get to Toyota, Uganda, you are going to find a Hilux, newly Hilux pickup with open roof, newly registered, and it is just packed at the gate. The door, you'll find the door open and the key inside. When you get there, just enter into the car, start it, and engage the gear to drive. Are we together? Have you had the instructions very well? Now begin your journey to Toyota, Uganda. I don't know what you are going to use, whether you are going to use a border border or you are going to be walking. But start your journey because the Lord has said it. Would you now start going to Toyota, Uganda? Now, when the disciples reached Toyota, Uganda, they found it exactly the way they were told. I, I don't care whether they had a driving license, <laughs> but they got into the car, started it, and the, the watchmen there were asking, why are you doing this? And they just say, the Lord needs it. And before long, the gates opened. And these guys who went on border border come back driving. Now they bring the car to Jesus. And they would look behind to see if there's a police car following them. But there was no police car following them. Jesus had sorted out the matter. Are you still in the imagination? Now the car is around. Hilux, open roof, newly registered, zero mileage. The only mileage is between Toyota and probably here. Are we together? Now, please don't say, do, do it for me, Lord. <laughs> Some of you might say, do it for me, Lord. I'm not that preacher, <laughs> okay? I also expect that you don't go after this, if this someone to the parking and look for a brand new car, <laughs> newly registered, and then you begin claiming and saying, this one here, 
The Lord has need for it. When it is you, don't go and ask people's cars, okay? But let me say, we have worked with Jesus for these three years. And having told us to go to Toyota Uganda, pick this car and bring it, and came with it hassle-free, I want to say that if it were me, I would still ask, there's something I don't know about Jesus yet. Something I do not understand about him. If it were our limited minds who understand procurement processes and clearance processes of cars that are taken out of the bond, I would either imagine that Jesus owned a car bond that our group and our team of disciples don't know about. Or that Jesus had made these arrangements well ahead of time. And our treasurer, Honorable Judas, was not aware that there was a fund that would actually procure Jesus' transport. You could be right to think that Jesus owned a bond. If you read Psalm 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in the world, and all who dwell in it. So it's right. The bonds belong to Jesus. He is the Lord over it. And those who claim to be taking care of it, who claim to be owners, are actually stewards. If you think Jesus made arrangements, you could possibly be right. Because Jesus was the inventor of the online economy and purchases. He kind of did an online purchase in the first century. If you thought internet has made online purchases possible, Jesus had done his online purchase. That time, he knew about the online economy before it came to be. I'm totally blown away by this kind of ordering for a car. Of course, a donkey in his time. But if Jesus was here today, I bet he would not ride the donkey. He would have an open roof and he would purchase it the same way that has happened that happened on the first century. With this, I just feel truly there is something we do not understand about Jesus yet. I owe him the greatest reference. In fact, Jesus is worthy of adoration, praise, and honor. Now, please, the car is around. The response of the crowd to Jesus on a donkey, on his open roof. Verse 35 to 37, they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down, the Mount Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Please, I know you may not afford, some of us may not afford an air ticket to go to Tel Aviv and drive to Jerusalem and even go between Bethany and Bethphage and down the valley 
to Jerusalem. But anyway, it happened a long time ago. You can't recreate the scene there. But today we are here. Palm Sunday. I want you again to go with me on this journey of imagination. Imagine you are one of the two who went to Toyota and brought the car, open roof, zero mileage, newly registered, hassle free. You are one of them, you are there. Imagine Bartimaeus is around, one of the disciples who was healed of his blindness. And all the other fellow blind guys who were healed, all of them are together here. Again, imagine that we have the former lepers who were healed, and they are part of the crowd. Imagine Lazarus, who was raised from dead, death, is around. Imagine Uncle Sakaias, who had just been delivered, had also accompanied Jesus to this place. Imagine the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years and she caught the helm of his garment and got healed is also around. Imagine the adulterous woman who was to be stoned to death and Jesus just, you know, wrote down on the... and everyone disappeared. This woman is also around. Imagine the invalid who had been at the pool of Siloam for 38 years struggling to, be, to, to get somebody to drop him in and get healed. Jesus comes and just, you know, raises him up. He is part of the team, congregation gathered. Imagine that Zacchaeus has come with his family. Lazarus with, her, with his sister, two, his two sisters, Mary and Martha. And all of those who have come, they have come with their families. They have come with their relatives, their friends, their in-laws. All of them are part of this congregation. And imagine, I am also there. And you are also there. By the way, where did this king find you? Imagine also Afande. You remember the Afande? The centurion who said, I am a man of orders. Just order and my child will be well. He's also present. And all the relatives of the dead girl who was raised up were also present. And you and me are also there. I would like to invite you to just stand up and assume you are gathered with those of Lazarus and Zacchaeus and the women whom I've talked about. Just imagine you are with them. And you are part of that big crowd. Seeing Jesus on this donkey. And I want to imagine that all of you have actually read Zechariah 9.9. Because these guys of, 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 of the Jewish community, they crammed scripture. And they knew this story of Zechariah 9.9. See your king. Comes humbly riding on a donkey. <laughs> and just imagine, this is coronation day. Put up your palms. This is coronation day. I want you to do something that all the crowd that were gathered that day did. Don't shake yet, don't shake yet. <laughs> we are told <laughs> that the whole crowd of disciples and remember those who are dead, who are risen, those who are sick, they are there, those who are blind, they are raised, those who are lame, they are here. And now you are also there. And you know where you have come from. Mama Pesh, where did you come from? <laughs> where, where did he find you? What about uh, 
the Duncans. Where did God find you guys? And now you are in this congregation of Palm Sunday and you have seen your king on the cult. Reverend Majora, where were you? Masaka. <laughs> now, friends, I don't know what you could do that day, but what the disciples did that day was that they shouted. They shouted. And what was the shout? I do not understand because the noise was just too much. One of the things I remember, which is written here, is that they said, blessed. Now, can you say all, blessed is the king. Who comes? In the name of the Lord. You have not shouted yet. Shout at the top of your voice. Blessed is the king. Once more, blessed is the king. Who comes in the name of the Lord? Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now sit down. Friends, Jesus is king. He is. God just put together these events. That when you see one riding on a donkey, coming humbly to Jerusalem, you have the king. Remember that Jesus would always refuse to be referred to as a Messiah or the king. He would sometimes tell people, do not tell anyone. You remember that? Do not mention about it. When he healed, he said, go and tell the priests, not me. When he did things that actually meant he was king, he never, ever accepted to be called king. But right here, he makes this one and only procession to Jerusalem. And he accepts people to refer to him as king. The implications of this entry on a donkey has already been mentioned by Zechariah. But remember the people are saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is actually quoted from Psalms 118. But it is slightly edited. Some of you are good at copy and paste. These guys were copy, paste, edit. And they edited Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And just added there, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm also aware that there are cultures who have kings. Like our culture here in Buganda, we have a king. We, have, we are in the tradition and culture of kings. And there are many tribes in Uganda who have kings. There are also monarchies of the, you know, in the, in the in British monarchies. However, Christ is a radically different king. Completely. He is king of all. He is the king of kings. It was on Palm Sunday that Jesus was first referred to as king. And he did not refuse. This is a coronation of sorts. Not like the usual coronation of monarchies around the world. That would attract media attention including BBC, Radio Uganda, and uh, B uh, UBC, NTV, and so forth. 
I'm sure you know the coronations that happen in Uganda. And even that happened recently for Prince Charles, or now King Charles. It was on BBC full time. The entire service, the entire coronation function. Not with that of Jesus. It was just a two and a half mile, or two and a half, two, two point seven kilometer journey. A procession of a king. I'm sure if it were today, you'd also find it live on X. In verse 35 to 38, we see an extraordinary and spontaneous outpouring of worship. When they brought the donkey to Jesus, those who brought the donkey to Jesus felt like we had nothing else to offer except our own clothing. And they removed their clothing and put it on the donkey. As he went along, people spread their own clothing on the road. They removed their clothing, put it on the road. When he came somewhere around Mount Olives, down the valley, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices. I want you to imagine again. You have nothing else to give. And here is your king coming. The only thing you do is to remove your clothes and put it on the floor. And you know that place had, actually, if you want to see many stones, go to Israel. Between Bethphage, Bethany, that valley, to Jerusalem, just stones. Many stones. Irregular stones. And imagine you take your own clothing. Now, friends, if you removed this one you have, what will you look like? <laughs> now, they removed clothing, laid it down for the donkey to step on them against the stones. That means some of that clothing was never worn again because it came with patches a stone because of the hooves and the stones and they had no worry removing it there are times when you feel I demean myself taking off my clothes so that the king may be elevated they took off their clothing they demeaned themselves so that Jesus may be lifted up. Isn't that worship? Now, having gone through that imagination, I want to say that we may not need to go there. But where we are, we are part of Jesus' disciples. I know sometimes we want to go to prayer mountain in order to worship. But listen to this conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman had a theology of the time. And the theology was that there is a mountain where all people have to go in order to worship the Lord. Jesus says, the hour is coming. That's in John 4, verse 23 and 24. The hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. We are actually free to worship the king where we are. And we can worship both corporately as Thornycroft Chapel and individually as Moses. And also corporately as Moses and family.
Real worship is humbling ourselves before God and exalting him in our hearts. True worship of God is when we love him with all our heart, our souls, our mind, and our strength. As in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 8. It's when we prize God above everything else and put God above, put God first in our hearts. Another wonderful aspect of our worship is the joyful, loving affection we have for our God. He is our loving master who takes good care of us. So we love him back too. And we are happy to be with him. Let me warn you again. Beware of lip service. Beware of lip mouth worship without your heart. Jesus called that lip service hypocrisy. In Matthew 15, verse 7 to 9, says, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain, in vain, they worship me, teaching us doctrines, the commandments of men. Beware of lip service. Jesus says it is what? Hypocrisy. And he quotes Isaiah. So Isaiah actually spoke this. And Jesus quoted it. And he's telling us, beware of hypocrisy. Let me mention some few practical ways of worship that are mentioned in this text of Luke 19, verse 28 to, uh, to 38. Or you can actually get them, you can, uh, by implication, find them there. Number one, we worship when we go. I remind you again of the two disciples who were sent to go and pick the transport for Jesus. Jesus could still go because between Bethany and Jerusalem, it was actually this kind of the same route. But he chose to pick some two people to go ahead of him and bring. What was he looking for? He wanted you to participate. He wanted them to participate in this worship. You can participate by going. I hope you imagined yourself going to Toyota Uganda for the brand new car and how the gates were open for you when you still had even doubts of whether you will come with the, with the vehicle. Part of worship is service to God. Where is he sending you? I'm fully convinced that this church, Thornycroft Chapel, has a lot of opportunities for worship. Not only coming to church on Sunday and sit there and go back home. You have worship, thank you. But there's more you can still do in this chapel. I hear, the, I hear Paul, Canon Paul, always asking, if you feel you can serve in this church, we have a place for you. Isn't that true? Or oh, I heard wrongly. Have you also heard? That is the Lord calling you to participate in worship. Some people think it's only the singers who worship. And actually they do it so well, they come, let's praise and worship, isn't it? What about the rest of you, what do you do? <laughs> Jesus says, we worship by participating. Go, find a place, ask the chaplain, what can I do? I don't have much time anyway, but I have this particular time on this, what can I do? Can I just even be bringing for you mandazi every day? <laughs> just one mandazi every, every day. I want to serve you by just making sure that after the service, you have something to bite. I don't think 
Paul, would you deny even one? <laughs> I'm sure you'll gladly receive that one what? Mandazi. Some of you think you need to do a whole packet. No. Just pick one and bring it to the chapel. This choir, after singing, their voices out. They need to drink something. You can actually participate, not in singing, but you at least refresh the singers. You will have participated in worship. Let me tell you, it's nice to participate. One time I was the chaplain to the archbishop. You know that, huh? So what was I doing? I was doing three things. One, I was responsible for his calendar. Number two, I was responsible, of course, when you are responsible for the calendar, you handle all the appointments, isn't it? So when you handle all the appointments, even when the president wants to see him, they call me. <laughs> Service, eh? I was also responsible for carrying his bag with his things. So I made, I made sure that his garments and all are packed and they are put in the car as we drive off to Madi West Nile Diocese. So he could not do without me because he needed his what? His bag. And thirdly, I would be the one carrying the cross here. You see that cross, eh? I would be the one carrying. I was his hands for the what? For the cross here. So wherever the archbishop went, there also I was. <laughs> Whenever, whatever he ate, I also what? Ate. When he got gifts, I also got my small <laughs> envelope. <laughs> so what's holding you back? Come and serve. That's part of worship. But not for what you get, all right? Number two, practical way of worship. Give. Or offer. The disciples gave their outer garments. They didn't remove everything anyway. They gave their outer garments for Jesus to sit on and for the horse, the, the donkey, to walk on. They formed a carpet from their own clothings. I don't know that ca carpet must have been multicolored carpet. It was not red, it was not white, multi colored. I can't imagine, you know, Pesh giving her dress and then the, the Duncan's also giving theirs, my wife also giving hers and making a carpet. Multicolored carpet. They gave. They just gave. I've just heard that we have a, an appeal to go for mission in Karamoja. You cannot give your clothes right now for the horse of Jesus to walk over because it, it got finished. Now you can give to go to where? Karamoja. You can actually dress one of the clergy. Why not? With 60,000, isn't it? That's part of your worship. Let me tell you, when you give, you have a legacy. Why won't you enter into the books of the, the records of that time that you actually even removed your clothes and somebody even removed, gave, gave his donkey? He, they entered into the, the records, they gave. Let me ask you if you've just bought your new car and parked here, is there anyone who has a new car today? <laughs> New car, newly registered, and we need to go and bless it for, for the Lord's use. Now imagine you've just come with your car, and then they come and say, now the Lord needs it. <laughs> Sometimes you think, you know, that guy, was, it was easy for him just to give his horse, his donkey. What about you? When they come to you now and say, just give your car now for service. The same feeling you have was exactly the same feeling that my friend, the owner of the donkey, had when they told him, the Lord needs it. You also hear our theme says, 
in Romans 12, verse 1. What does it say? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and, and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That's what our theme says. True and proper worship is in sacrificial giving. Not only your resources, but also giving yourself. Number three, joyfully, heartily praise. That's one of the practical things that was here. You saw the disciples, how they praised. And even those guys, the Pharisees told Jesus, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, and they said, Jesus, tell your disciples to keep quiet. And Jesus says, if they should keep quiet, the stones will shout. Now I told you that the stones were too many. Actually, there were more stones than there were people. By the way, in Israel, there are more stones than there are people. Many more times more than the people. Now, what if the stones started praising and they are knocking each other left and right? What would that noise be? I think we better have people praise the Lord and shout rather than have stones in Israel praising God and shouting because that would be more than an earthquake. Joyfully and heartily praise the Lord. I, I used to hear this song. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Savior and my God. And sometimes I would hear in church, Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Savior and my God. And you see, people are actually almost sleeping. But the song says, oh, happy. Why not say, oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Savior and my God. Well, may this glowing heart rejoice. Well, may this glowing heart rejoice. <laughs> God calls us to hearty, joyful worship. Let me tell you something. Uh, there's this guy called uh, Frank Hoy somebody who actually discovered he's a psychiatrist in one of the universities in the U.S. He discovered that people who are always joyful and happy live better lives. They, are better, they have better lives. They even sleep well, they eat well, they eat healthy. People who are not joyful, they drink wines, they get drunk, they are on smoking, they are on drugs, and their lives are terrible. Why don't you try joyful, hearty worship of the king and your life will be better? And I want to say, worship God for who he is, not for what you get. Worship for who he is and not for what you get. True worship of God is when we love him with all our hearts, like we have seen in Deuteronomy 4. Let me tell you a few things, just this testimony before I stop. I want to confirm to you that the online economy of Jesus is still active and productive even today. He can still do for you things online. And his own online. Let me give you an example. Around 2016-17, when I had gone to study in Korea, 
we had moved from the provincial house to another house. It was still a provincial house anyway, but we renovated it and put it together. <clears throat> so when we moved there, one morning, my daughter Esther asked us when we were having breakfast, hey, Dad, I think it's time to have a dining set in our house. And I said, oh, thank you so much. We pray that God will provide. A few days, uh, and during that time, we would sometimes host our home cell, uh, Namirembe home cell. So we are, we are part of Akele and Namirembe home cell sometimes. So we were part of that fellowship, and we had opportunity to rotate. We didn't have so much furniture in our house, but anyway, we accepted that let the fellowship come to our house. Some of us actually don't want fellowship because they feel we don't have enough. But we said, okay, let the fellowship come. So the fellowship came, we had fellowship together, and people left. Many other days, I think months later, Remember, my, my Esther had said, I think we need a dining. And we had said, we will pray and God will pro let God provide. One morning, we just woke up from sleep. We had a hoot of a car from the, at the gate. And Carolyn here went to open the gate. And she saw one of the home cell members driving in a pickup. Once he entered into the compound, he parked and just went on to his uh, cabin, the, the, the open cabin, and started offloading. Six-seater dining set, table and chairs. In addition, a three-seater, a three-seater, four-seater sofa set, four-seater sofa set, six-seater dining set and was ordering us, where can we put it? Where can we put this? Where can we put this? We still have that, that furniture actually in our house. If you came to our house today, we can show you. And that's the furniture. We used that furniture. We didn't buy others. Our sitting room was a bit small and we wanted, we had young children, so we wanted them to play around. We don't want to inconvenience them with too many seats. So we left the house kind of open with a few seats. Now everybody has grown up. And when we are having our fellowship in the evening, people are scrambling over some seats there, those, uh, those sofas. So it came into our mind that we need another set, <laughs> another sofa set. Just before Christmas last year, a couple of friends of ours I don't know whether they are here. <laughs> but a couple of friends of ours asked me if they could visit them on a weekend. And I said, oh, actually, I'm around on Sunday. Can you come after prayers? They said, it's okay, perfect. So they came. They sat. They pulled in with their car. We sat. We talked. While the husband was engaging me in serious conversation, the wife was outside there making connections with somebody and directing them, pass here, pass there, turn. And then they pulled our daughter, peace, come. And then they went behind the house. And they were communicating. All of a sudden, we were surprised to see a truck pulling into our compound. And men, Kanyama, offloading, <laughs> offloading sofa sets. Seven-seater, brand new into our house, and they ordered us to rearrange the house. We kept rearranging the house. Some of the other furniture just got off. Now, <laughs> we have all those sitters through the online economy of Jesus. <laughs> but let me say, worship Jesus, but not for what you get but for what you give. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this Palm Sunday. We actually experience it here, that this Palm Sunday happened at Thorncroft Chapel today, and we were part of it. Lord, it's our prayer that we 
worship you as king. Not with our, our mouths alone, but with our hearts. Help us to give you hearty praise and worship every moment of our lives. And let that be our lifestyle, Lord. Lord, if there is anybody here who thought you owe them something, Lord, assure them that you owe them nothing, but they owe you everything and that your online economy is active. I pray for each one of us, Lord, that we worship you in truth and in spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest. Uh, let us thank the Lord for using his servant, doctor, for speaking to us this morning. And let us also thank him for giving his time studying the word and bringing it to us this morning. So let us pray. Be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praises always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives as well as our worship be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us stand and receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Now the choir will lead us with a hymn as we move out. <laughs> 